Hello, hello and welcome back everyone to Napoleon Total War as the British, where previously we did take and liberate Brussels from the pesky Prussian forces. And I think a small historical note where we did actually create a protectorate in Brussels, thereby creating the Kingdom of Belgium, which is absolutely smashing. We do have a few new units out of that. You get uh, some units for free when you do create a protectorate. We've got some Lightfoot and some Black Brunswickers. Very nice infantry indeed, actually, to get those out. Um, saves us a turn or so of, of uh, recruiting them. Do we put them anywhere is the question. Is there anywhere that will be particularly useful for them? Not at the moment, but I tell you, we'll keep them at the moment down here in Reims because it's going to be the job of Alexander Abercrombie to, on this turn, start approaching Cleves. And we can certainly walk through there now. We also have Amsterdam as our protectorate as well. So we do have an excellent area of influence on the coastal settlements here, which is absolutely brilliant for us. It means we have easy access into Europe from the mainland of Britain there, as much as an island can be a mainland, of course. However, despite that being excellent news, we did also waste some time due to technical errors. Uh, just before I loaded in that battle, or as I was doing it, my PC crashed and I had to do that again. So that's not the biggest bother. The thing is, we did also fight this army previously and destroyed it at a small cost of our own lives there. But after having to reload, I thought I'm not doing that bloody battle again right now. Uh, so we do have to do that immediately. So we're going to be fighting that right now for the second time. And this, as a reminder, is Friedrich Wilhelm von Bulow and, of course, Gebhard von Blücher and quite a nasty army themselves. A lot of standard musketeers, uh, but they're very well chevroned up. The most chevroned up here is 43 accuracy and 13 morale. While we do consist largely of our own top tier elite infantry, you can see they're very nearly matching that actually at that top tier musketeers themselves. And they do have a massive cavalry advantage as well with lots of lancers, which don't take the direct fight of course, but uh, numbers also have their own strength. So let's uh, come in here and see if we can get a better result than previously. So before we press deploy, let's run down our battle plan as ever. We're going to try and stay fairly centralised with our formation today. The terrain is not in our favour. We do have this little ridge, but it's passable on the enemy facing side. And that's not going to help us whatsoever. And that does hinder our own deployment on this side, assuming the enemy is going to play defensively, which they did previously, and the AI does like to do so. We can't unlimber our cannons at the moment because we don't have range onto the enemy's starting position. So we're going to have to move up. I think we're going to try and move our cannons to this sort of line over here, aligned with the tree cover. We're going to move our light foot into this area, see if we can tempt the enemy out. And a second unit of light will, I think, move perhaps over to this tree line as well. And they can fall back, do some true skirmishing and move into our cannons and, of course, our Coldstream Guard. Where we are, once again, going to centralise a couple units of Coldstream Grenadiers on our right flank. As well as some Coldstream Guard and Grenadiers on our left, backed up by some standard foot reserves. And uh, we're going to put some standard foot reserves on our far right just to make sure we can have a bit better control over the enemy cavalry should they choose to approach from this area and they can box up and square up as need be. Okay, so it looks like the enemy cavalry is going to try and charge down our light foot over here, which means we are very, very prone to a flanking charger as we do have to retreat from that. There's no way we can stand up to that. They are under cannon fire, losing cavalrymen already. The trees should slow down their movement, but you can see we're not double timing for some reason, which is going to hurt. Might want to push up here with our cold stream if possible. It looks like the cavalry is about going to be in range. Let's stop firing our cannons, take them off of fire at will, because we will get masses of friendly fire otherwise. And we will get some friendly fire as we move in with our lights here. But that's absolutely fine. Some lances there they were, so the charge that we took will be absolutely devastating to our flank. We tried to push up our skirmishers that far because the enemy is playing defensive and pushing up some skirmishers is of course the way to try and pull the enemy forwards and that of course has not paid off for us. So that's a small micro mistake there. It's not going to cost us the battle but it is going to cost us some men to begin with. I took them off of fire at will. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's not good because you can see that's exploding our 
in the middle of our own ranks. That is very annoying actually. We're going to have to just uh, limit them up again to avoid that. That's very annoying. Okay, let's double time behind our lines. I think actually what we do is we push up with our cold stream here and force them into a square to take a charge. And what we can do is move around our other Lightfoot who were hoping to back up our others. Just to make sure we can get some shots on the enemy's retreat. There we go, just about. They're not quite ready to take that charge. It's been very messy already, taking 21 losses on that charge already. See how devastating Lancers are on their charge. Very, very devastating. Let's take those off a of, uh, fire at will. But that has shattered the 10 remaining Lancers. In fact, one of them going down there. I believe that's no, not quite. So that would be to the uh, cold stream there. Now the enemy has repositioned even further back, so we've tried pushing up with some cold stream into this tree line because they will be excellent in that cover and they can hide in there very easily as well. So the idea is to use our uh, light foot over here to get on top of this ridge line, get some line of sight onto the enemy artillery while they're limbered up, before hopefully the enemy can get into position to fire at us themselves. Relying on this uh, ridge, to cover us. We have moved up some cavalry to try and take this Lancer fight here. So we're going to try and intercept them before they get on the backs of us. Learned that the hard way of course. And we are going to be able to fire onto the cannons there. Are we getting any hits is the question. Don't see any just yet. See if we can watch out because we have some light cavalry in the form of Hussars. And once again Lancers. Wait for the enemies to form up and see what we can do about running away there. Might believe it's a little too late though. How close are our own cavalrymen? They're guessing there. Yeah, it looks like we're going to confuse them there with our mix of formation. The musketeers are now going to be in range, so let's run away. Double time, please. We can move into our cannon range, which you can see is going to reach. Where is it? I can't see it myself, actually. We have certainly unlimbered. Uh, it's not on canister. Just can't see. Here we go. It's just here. It's a little too faint for the uh, terrain there. Looks like the Hussars are going to try and take the fight with our Dragoon Guards. That's not a fight they want to stay in, as well as these Lancers going in here against Dra Dragoon Guards. So we will be able to win that fairly handily. I'll tell you what, the enemy's position is not going to be able to fire on us there, so what we can do is double time a good quick formation over here, and we can fire into the enemy's flank. So what we can do is probably uh, stop here, we're going to have to brace perhaps for a charge there because we're being very greedy. There we go, we're going to be able to take that. So we might just make some contact there just because of the enemy's formation. Let's pull back a tad. There we go, I don't know how we lost that young man. That's it. Oh, that's the enemy's. Just fallen off his horse. How are we doing over here? Enemy's losing. We've not lost many men at all there, which is great. And if we can... We'll pull away here very quickly so we don't get friendly fire. Yeah, that's hurting our morale quite a bit now. So we'll just pull down here. It's not a problem. If we can get a good morale shock into the enemy's flank there, that would be brilliant. We'll keep our cavalry close though, but out of the musket's range. We're getting very close to drawing them into our cannon range. If we pull back with these... Dragoons, because the enemy's looking to get into musket range as well there. We can see that the enemy's actually brought in their own cavalry in this area. That's okay, we can take that. Absolutely fine. Um, am I reading that wrong there? They're just reinforcing, not a problem. Just reading the map wrong, that's always good. Let's take this then, because they're forcing another melee there. Yeah, we're going to win that. That's okay, we'll just pull back very quickly though, so that we don't get shots from their men over there. And they're looking at bringing in their own Slazian Crassiers, which are very good armoured heavy cavalry. I think now actually is the time to fully retreat with our light foot and bring them down here. They will be tired. Yeah, let's pull out here completely. So we're not making a lot of progress, we've been fitting a lot of losses, but the enemy just not breaking. These chevrons of experience really helping with their morale. 
course, the downside of having heavy cavalry is their speed compared to things like lances and standard light cavalry. How are we doing now, though? Very close to being in our cannon range, as you can see here. In fact, they're just about touching it now. Let's pull back even further, and maybe we can draw to our center. And these units, you can see, this one's not hidden. Why is there such a massive misfire? Look at that inaccuracy. That is going to hurt our own cavalry. But we're going to have to push through. We're getting some shots up now with our guards. We're going to start losing speed because we're so tired now. And I think actually what we'll do is we'll hold fire once again. So we don't get so many more friendly losses there to our own cannon fire. Well, I think the time for the light infantry is over. So we've withdrawn those. We've pushed up our cannons to try and threaten the enemy a little bit more. And we're going to unlimber as the enemy threaten us with another group of lancers. Hopefully we can unlimber in time and actually change to canister shot. But you can see the canister shot doesn't have the greatest of ranges. But we'll see. Sometimes you can get them to fire outside of their range. Let's see, I think actually, let's, let's try and attack ground and see what happens. They are moving out of range, of course. Yeah, it's going to be far too far away, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, we do get a few hits. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll carry on back to carcass shots for now. Although that was actually, even though it was outside of effective range, excellent hits there. Really, really good. So we'll change back to canister now that they're moving in. <laughs> and attack ground over here for now. We have pushed up all of our infantry. You can see they're actually hiding here because they can hide in light scrub. And we get a massive volley over here. I don't think we'll need to square up for this. Their morale is already fairly poor and that's gonna completely annihilate the charge there. We're gonna get, of course, the use of canister shot when possible. Might have accidentally used the wrong infantry or used the wrong toggle there, not a problem. We're about ready. Certainly are. Not so effective there. But the enemy is going to come back for another round. Attack round about here. That would be great. That's really, really going to hurt them if that comes through properly. We can reload for them. See, we're taking musket fire. They are now truly in range. We're going to have to fire, guys. We have to get that reload on. Lives do depend on it. Oh, saved by our cold stream there. Yeah, the reload on these cannons only seems to be quick when they're firing at their own men. <laughs> Versus modern technology of these howitzers here. There we go, get some fire out. You can see the uh, morale there only just shattering now. It takes a lot to break the Prussian cavalry. We're going to switch back to quick climb now. Let's see if we can get some range onto the enemy cannons. Let's see if the enemy reacts to that. Well, through some impatience, we've decided to run straight into the gauntlets. We're going to circumvent these musketeers with these dragoons, and go straight for the enemy's cannons. We need to double time this before we accidentally engage in melee. And we're going to run straight into the completely limbered up <laughs> cannons here. <laughs> Keep our own cannons, of course, on hold fire, we did say. Not entirely sure why they're firing now. That's an extremely short range to affect our own infantry once again. Interesting. Gonna wipe out that one unit to start with, and hopefully this forces the enemy to move forwards is the goal. If anything else, neutralizing their cannons allows us to take an aggressive stance. See so just slowly pushing through, cutting through and disabling their cannons. Down to one available cannon on this unit. Zero there, they have shattered. 
And then moving in with Bluka there to see if they can uh, inspire their own men. But uh, it can't inspire them out of the grave. And again, AI not too sure what it wants to do here. It's going to get very confused, allowing us to completely wipe out their cannons. It does mean we're going to be very tired though. Stamina in Napoleon Toad Sport is extremely vital. You do need to watch out for it. Of course, he failed on that. But I think a good trade for completely wiping out their cannons there. We are going to take the retreat now. And see if we can finally force the enemy to move towards us. Very, very useful there. Not even taking 20 losses, gaining a chevron of experience on those dragoons. Excellent. Not even the dragoons who engaged the cavalry in melee gained any chevrons of experience there. You've really got to fight for that. So you're going to pull down behind our lines here once again so that we're more defensive. We're going to see if we can finally get our cannons firing onto this large group of infantry here. They do still have a unit of these Silesian Carassiers over here. Some very nasty cavalry of their own, Once, as we've already said. Are our cannons going to fire out though is the question. Might have to replace these if they keep performing poorly. Which is a shame. We spent so long researching into them. And investing into them. That though is going to be magnificent. Really stretching across their whole line. And even threatening their generals here. As you can see. That really hurt their morale for a time. Brought them down by quite a number of men actually each. That is, okay, all right, maybe I'm gonna take back my words of, uh, <laughs> my words there of dismissing the cannons. We're gonna to have to square up with all infantry here because they are threatening. The Aegis of I believe they can fire while mounted. So actually they can threaten a square if they want to uh, from a range. We're gonna take a charge here from the heavy cavalry made for breaking formations. But it looks like their morale won't hold Got into our standard or oh, cold stream foot guards. Excellent melee defense on them, as you would expect. But they're now going to threaten our squares with some good old rank and file. Which is not great. We can switch the canister shot once again and rip straight through the musketeers over here. We do have this hill advantage. We are using it. Our grenadiers here. Firing down onto the standard musketeers, of course. Massive advantage we have there. We can certainly hold that line. And yeah, our cannons really ripping through there with their canister shots. We're going to carry on with this advancing unit here. The more experienced unit. We're going to hold the squares here. And in fact, curl round with our cavalry to see if we can get some flanking charges on. We're going to... Abandon the square in the centre formation though. Pull back a tad. Have to double time that. Yeah, this is the Jaegers of Ferd. Taking a lot of losses, but holding firm. Getting some excellent canister shot though through the centre. That is going to have to hold its own for that. I fully believe they can. They start bloody firing again, is it? Is the case? How are our cavalry doing for this area? Let's take on the Jaegers of Ferd once and for all. The Earl of Uxbridge can move in as well. Taking a melee charge from the Musketeers, are we? That is going to cause melee contact. Okay. Interesting. We will win that, but we'll take quite some losses. It looks like they're going to join in with the second unit there. That's absolutely fine. Allows us to engage from the flank there. And they're going to start charging in their generals now. All right, well, Dragoons can duel Blucher there. Earl of Uxbridge can move back to counter these Silesian Carassiers. Not a problem. And we can come out of square formation here. And we can take this ridge and fire down into the thick formations, causing a melee. Are we going to want to take this hill? We certainly are. In fact, we'll move up here to the flank to protect ourselves. Curl around here to push. Looks like they've caused melee actually with our cannon. So we're going to counter that. So pull out. That's not great. This happened uh, not too long ago, but we have killed wounded 
Gebhard von Blücher, which is excellent. That would be a massive morale shot for them. How are we doing over here? We're facing. Let's pull out here, please, because we're going to get some nasty friendly fire. But we are shooting Gebhard von Blücher's remaining staff. And it's going to be rather a nasty battle once again. Can't seem to avoid them as of late. Which is a shame. But it does provide us some good experience. Hopefully we can get some cannons of shot point blank here. If they reload. Now they're looking. They're not really trying. Okay, interesting. Really issue that please. Are they going to face? Hmm. The responsiveness of these units is not ideal. <laughs> At least our infantry are here though. They do the job. There we go. Lovely volley fire out there to crush the enemy centre. Completely shattered this unit. Enemy generals rousing off. We will chase them down. Dealt with the enemy Carassios. And that, although it's sticky and bloody, is going to be a victory. And we did manage to keep hold of our cannons, that which took the melee charge. Nothing of ours did rouse off which is excellent. We're going to chase down the remaining men with our cavalry and make sure this doesn't turn into another open field battle to follow up with. Well, certainly less bloody for ourselves than uh, the previous video where I think we took about uh, 1,500 losses. So not too bad at all, if you ask me, especially considering we took some melee charges on our infantry and cannons. Uh, so that is absolutely brilliant. We did push them down to just over 500 men remaining. And that will push it down to two standard units remaining. So we do have some mop-ups still, but we don't have the movement to do so. And I think finally we can end this turn. We've been on this turn for a couple videos now. Let's see how the Prussians react. So a new gentleman has been recruited in Spain, which is excellent. Does he have any active traits? He has scholar for civil and in gentleman scientist for industrial, which is excellent because actually Salamancer is researching military technologies. That's not going to help us too much there. <laughs> but not to worry, it's not like we have too many technologies left. And we can always move them onto something like interchangeable parts for reduced upkeep costs across the board, which I think would be, well, would certainly be amazing. Unless we want to really push steamships, but they're not the biggest priority at the moment. And neither are steam locomotives. So I think that would be the next thing for Salamancer. What else do we have? Trait gained for a spy for more subterfuge. Excellent, always useful. He's spying on Berlin, of course, and has created a spy network. Now we have a new gentleman over here in France. Not really needed. Does he have, what sort of traits do you have? General research points and industrial and even more industrial. I'll tell you what, we'll move him down if we can then to Salamanca. He can help us out later. Having a general available if we do so choose trade agreement cancel with Spain. This is sounding like with this letter of demands. A letter of demands, that's interesting. Okay, from Wurzenberg. That's because we're not garrisoning. That's absolutely fine. We can garrison it now. It's going to need to replenish anyway. That's okay. So let the Prussians move down. So why, why then cancelled with Spain? Because uh, they've not joined our enemies. That's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. A lot of construction has been completed. Uh, we have a dry dock in Le Havre, which is brilliant. A fully upgraded uh, iron mining complex in France and in Paris is now a military academy, which means Paris is now an excellent military hub for us, uh, which is exactly what we need on mainland Europe. Scotland's also upgraded its theatre. If we come over here, we can upgrade, we can't upgrade that, it's a final tier for a standard settlement, which is a non-capital settlement, which is brilliant. Might want to go for the iron mining complex up here, but it's not the greatest return on investment. Having said that though, we've got money coming out of every orifice, so we'll, uh, we'll go for it anyway. Uh, what are we doing over here? We have completed Nelson's column, which means we have a national prestige bonus, and we have minus... 10% upkeep cost for all naval units, which is a massive boon. 
uh, considering we are starting to slowly transition from frigates to first rate ships, which are extremely expensive. 372 per turn per ship. I think we're going to want to start using them uh, because having them about sat idly by is, of course, a complete and utter waste. So let's come down here. Uh, we are starting to recruit, I think within four turns, some 122-gun heavy first rates, which I think we're going to send over to Nelson, which would be brilliant because he needs a few more ships. It's quite powerful himself, but it'd be nice to use him and take on, I think, the Danish Merchant Navy, which is sacked over here. Oh, actually, there's a Prussian Navy there. Let's have a quick poke around. All right, so there's a lot of frigates, a lot of minor frigates. That's very interesting. I'm sure we can take that right now, but just for confidence sake, we'll wait for some reinforcements. They're certainly not going anywhere anytime soon. And it's not exactly a merchant navy. You can guess they probably have about three trading ships in that area. Uh, there's two clues. Very low income off of the trade routes. Uh, suggests only a very minor amount of trade ships, of course. And we can generally see from the Eunice icons that every ship down to this 38 gunner is very likely a frigate. And these three are quite likely uh, trade ships. Uh, it just comes from experience of uh, playing the game. You get a bit of an eye for these things. The Prussians are going to threaten Strasbourg with this damage stack. They can certainly take that on with that damage stack. They can even demand surrender if they want to. So we are going to have to move in that direction. It does leave this minor raiding force unattended. But I think really that's not going to hurt anything too directly. There's nothing in range at the moment. What we can do, though, is think about sabotaging both of those, actually. Yeah. We could just sabotage both of those for now to make sure this one doesn't retreat. Let's have a look. Oh, detected. That's not a problem. Did fail. What about this one? 54%. Did work. Lovely. So, what we're going to do is move over here. And I think... Oh, what's over here? Hmm, okay, definitely going to try and retreat, we don't have the movement anyway, oh we do, alright, oh, yeah let's fight this because we've learnt far too often that we do not want to commit the cardinal sin of forcing an auto resolve and just losing too many men for what it's worth. And there we go, actually losing 200 men in that battle, but not a problem. Uh, still didn't completely wipe them out. <laughs> We're now a darling of the gutter press for John Moore, which is extra morale, and that's always excellent. Two commandment attack on our land as well is always useful. That will reduce their range as well, and they will take attrition, uh, hopefully, while being out in the snow here. Although, I suppose it doesn't say... Mm. No, I don't think so, actually. It's not quite cold enough, but they can't replenish. So that's absolutely fine. Do we have anything else to do over this turn? Got some gold mines in Spain to upgrade for some extra money. We have a Razi to reinforce Nelson over here. Absolutely love Razis, I do. And of course, we have made it to, over to Cleves. So we're going to do this one. Very easy once again. Bit of a meat grinder. Very straightforward battle. We're not going to try anything too fancy. Straight up line combat against their masses of musketeers. Well, uh, we do start actually with a very nice hill advantage, but unfortunately the enemy's going to be so far back we're not going to be in range with our cannons. And I would bet once again they're going to play very defensively. It's going to be a very dirty town fight today. So we're going to split up our cannons. Uh, we're going to put them on one on either flank. 
we're going to concentrate on the flanks to try and draw the enemy out of the town because I really don't like town battles. They never end uh, very cleanly. Not that any of our battles have been particularly clean recently. We do have four units of light infantry. We're going to try and poke the enemy with those on either flank, push over to the sides. Enemy does generally curl round to face us and pull back though if we do press the side. So we're going to have to try and do that evenly and push them into a straight line so that we do fight on our own terms. We, once again, we are focusing on our flanks. We only have a few units to control the centre here. We're not looking uh, for a central line fight here. Uh, so these are going to be reactionary and again, to make sure the enemy can't punch through our empty centre. So we're in position on our right flank very nicely indeed, just waiting for our light infantry to really push up into this scrub over here. So we get some minor cover for our retreats and the enemy's really pushing on this flank as well. So we're gonna have to bring in our central reserve, put them over here, make sure we control, actually this minor ridge line would be br brilliant because it does have some minor tree cover as well. Might then have to really force over this left flank so it does stay relevant. I wanted to take this little uh, ridge over here so we could fire over our men very safely. But that's just not going to be the case, is that they're going to be completely irrelevant if we stay here. Let's push up very aggressively with them. They are horse artillery, so they do have movement speed, which is excellent. We can give them some rough movement orders for the moment. But we're going to have to be very quick on the draw over here. Let's get some barrage fire at the moment. We're firing a standard garrison. Uh, we can do that. Yeah, we can fire those standard garrisons. It's blobbing up quite a bit there. Get some kills, get some very early morale shots onto the enemy. We're going to stay in a defensive arc around here to force the enemy into a bit of a funnel. And that'd be great. But you do see that we do now need that extra help from our reserves because we're very open here. I'm not liking that at all. Let's double time this last little bit because we're almost in range. And we don't have that great a range advantage over the enemy with our skirmishers. Uh, of course, the British don't specialise in light foot. This is pretty much all we get. Uh, I want to play the Austrians if you want to get uh, excellent light infantry. But we are firing onto these musketeers. We might get a decent morale shock here as we do fire on them with our cannons. And yet yeah, instantly retreating there. But it's only a minor route. They'll certainly return, taking less than 60 losses already in total. They won't disappear forever, and in fact, I already think about coming back there, as you can see. Going to get overwhelmed very quickly, so once the enemy starts uh, deciding to form up a little better, which I think we get one more volley out, just to be greedy. Always greedy. Yeah, you can see they're really loosening there. And they're getting a hill advantage as well. Yeah, I think what we do is we pull back now. Pull back behind our foot over here whole round to defend. Firing out over here, going to be excellent cannon shots down the column over here. And now we're taking this hill. Let's double time this to really reinforce our flank there. And are we in a position with our horse artillery over here? No, we're not. Uh, why is that? Why is that? They're almost there. I'm just not reading that properly once again. Yeah, let's just take that as a slightly better ridge on this area. Almost in range here and almost formed up. And we're going to get some excellent volley fire out here. Oh, look at that. Obliterating them. Absolutely obliterating them. I think we're getting some collateral damage on the line behind this enemy, actually, which is excellent. It looks like our skirmishers have evacuated this area very nicely indeed. So... Going to do some true skirmishing once again. They will be winded already, but we'll just walk them over. There's no rush whatsoever. It's absolutely fine. Let's get our cannons onto the main blob here, and we'll barrage once again because that's off cooldown. We do successfully take this hill, which is brilliant, of course. So do we take that a little more concisely? We certainly do. Let's push around once again, funnel the enemy into this area. Like that. Still a bit of a ridge on this area. And the ground here is not favourable to approach. Which is brilliant. And I think we'll sit back here like so. And that can uh, limit the enemy's movements around the building. Let's uh, take them. Our cannons will be in range here. So actually what we'll do is we'll pull back here. And create an opening for our cannons to fire freely. What are we doing over here though? 
we need to, yeah, we are certainly firing on the land there. Uh, it's probably a bit of wasted ammunition, but we do need to thin their numbers down. They have 500 men per regiment in the land there, and we've seen previously that while they have low base morale, they do keep coming back to haunt us. That's rather nasty indeed. Can we get some canister shots out? We certainly can on the edge of our range. And that will really rip through them. There we go, getting some excellent fire. Now, pretty much unlimbered over here. Not in the best position though. We'll see how that lands. And that canister shot is absolutely going to rip through. Uh, we need our general close by here. And I think we're going to go around if possible with our cavalry. We might need to counter charge through our cannons here. Let's see, maxes and maxes and maxes of infantry here. Barrage is going to be off cooldown very soon, which is certainly going to be needed. Not quite rousing here. I think we're going to take another melee charge. Let's pull in our cavalry. Yeah, in fact, they're gaining morale on that charge there. Could be losing our cannons here, which is very sad because the experience on them is absolutely brilliant. Let's push our cavalry into the center here and cause absolute havoc. And actually, our light force has held its own against Landwehr and two units of musketeers. That's absolutely brilliant. Let's see if we can pull out our cannoneers for now. They're not going to be needed so much. Actually, what we'll do is we force melee in the centre here onto the Jaegers Fair. So I think we can take that fight. They have less men. We have far more experience, and this is their acting general. If we can get him out very quickly, then any morale shocks we get will count that much more. You can see the musketeer garrison coming back there, but they're routing so close to the uh, border of the battlefield that they've crossed that. So, oh, look at this. Look at this. Are they firing while hidden? That is absolutely brilliant. And uh, There's not a lot we can do other than force melee there. That's very interesting to see. Looks like our cavalry is broken through here from the cannons, which is great. Let's come back and man our cannons then, once again. We can certainly push through here, force that engagement. We'll take off fire at will for now here, and we'll push these units even further. And we've certainly sorted out our left flank here. The cannons not having the greatest impact on this area. We have killed their act in general, which is brilliant. And that means I think what we can do is help out our lights foot over here. Taking a fair few losses in this area, we have. But we can certainly live with it. Have we manned our cannons once again? We're just about to make that. And actually, I think we have enough men to man all four cannons, which is great. Let's move our cavalry out of the way and pull back. Let's pull back in this area. Uh, we're on round shot once again, which is preferred. We'll fire on the centre there. Enemy is going to try and face for this cavalry charge, so we're going to want to make this brief, if possible. Try and just pull through. In fact, we don't need to. There we go, they're rousing already. General's under fire. Is he mispositioned? Eh, not exactly. I think we're just taking some cannon fire there. So, is there much we can do about that? So yes, there is, actually. What we can do, double time through the buildings and actually force melee by using the buildings as cover, of course. How are doing their own cannons? Fire on this block of infantry by the looks of things. Routed off completely the enemy's right flank. So we'll sit pretty over here. Push on once again with our light foots, which have not burned through too much ammunition, but they are now very tired. So we'll support them, of course, with some line. Who are rather fresh. Getting some cannon shots right through this massive formation of armed citizenry. Poor bastards. Only conscripts did not want to be here. I'm sure, any sense of national glory has just uh, faded away there. I think historically, actually, because uh, the Prussian army had this air of superiority about them uh, of the time, really, it was completely outdated. I mean, Napoleon uh, himself made <laughs> made sure every other army was outdated by reforming his own and uh, creating the army corps organization but of course the prussians still lagging behind most other people actually uh relying really on extremely long baggage trains the prussian logistics was absolutely terrible for the time relying on past glories to uh like i say give them that air of superiority see if we can focus our cannons this area 
We should be able to completely wipe out the Musketeers here with the support of our standard foot. We are going to go in for the risky melee engagement, but that's absolutely fine. We can do that with the support of our backline here. I think what we'll do is we'll let these two units wipe out this area, get that one volley off to begin with, and then we'll push on even harder here. Because I'm not, yeah, not too worried about that whatsoever. That will force them to rouse off. Mass rouse is happening. Yeah, chain rouse is happening. We just need to force off this one unit of Musketeer Garrison. And we'll be absolutely happy. And there we go, a victory. And in fact, heroic at last. And in fact, despite the melee engagement, losing just less than 300 men. Very happy for that. And we now control Cleves. We are going to control that directly. Well, it appears scouting out the uh, Prussian trading navy was in fact a mistake. It's made them uh, think we don't have the uh, protection of Nelson's armada, and they're certainly right. All we can do is retreat. Very likely, very likely we're going to lose this fleet here, and that is really going to impact our income. Let's follow the retreat. Oh, don't like that. That's very close. Yeah, there we go. Very close to our second merchant navy there. So, Russia wants us to join, oh, they're offering to uh, join the war against Oldenburg. Uh, in exchange for 2,900 gold and breaking our trade agreement with Portugal. Uh, we're not going to get anything out of that, really. Prussia's so far away, they have no armies anywhere close to Oldenburg. They have no navy to help us, as far as I'm aware. And breaking our trade agreement with Portugal is just, it's just less income. It's just that simple. So we're going to refuse that. I must admit, I forgot we're at war with Oldenburg. <laughs> Not a problem. They are now sieging us down. They've got some lances. This is taken. Uh, this portrait's taken from uh, Empire Total War. Uh, they do have land there, largely. That's some very well experienced line infantry there, but still can't stand up to our own. The only problem is we are a little bit battered. We do have reinforcements towards Brussels, but they're two turns away, and that is not good. We have no one else nearby to help us out. Do we have a spy somewhere? I thought I saw someone. Uh, we might want to take them. Is this our closest spy? That can't be right. That's very interesting. Oh, we have one over here in Hanover, but... Oh, they can make it. Lovely stuff. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Sabotage in that arm is not going to make much difference because they don't need movement speed to uh, continue an attack. We can see if we can assassinate there. 50% chance. Uh, we'll, we'll have a go. Spy's not doing too much otherwise. And that was not successful. It's absolutely not a problem. Hey, what about a bit of challenge, hey? It's been a bit of a walkover until now. So, a lot of traits gained. Alexander Abercrombie, plus two command when besieging and more command when attacking. We also have our William Wickham spy, Morris subterfuge with infiltration. Have a lot of recruitment in Denmark for an extra army, of course. And we have a drill school in Strasbourg and a few courts of justice. And finally, the final tier of uh, museum and national gallery over in London. That's a lot of happiness specifically in London, but also plus two happiness to all classes in all of our regions, which is a massive boon for taking areas very quickly. Of course, we do get 20 wealth per turn as well as a massive increase to our national prestige which is skyrocketing at 3.7 thousand now as a total which is absolutely massive however that is unfortunately all we have time for today ladies and gentlemen leaving you on a bit of a cliffhanger where it's quite likely we'll be fighting a defensive siege battle there and it's about time one of our armies was truly pressured i think However, we might get some help from the Kingdom of Holland, our protectorate here. And that would be very juicy indeed, because that's actually quite a nice looking army there. Uh, a lot, a lot of good heavy dragoons and some light cavalry. That is brilliant. Okay. But that will be for next time. So thank you very much for watching once again. It's always very much appreciated. And I hope to see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.